Hello and welcome to another edition of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale History where today we'll be looking at our first DLC stage, a mixture of Heavenly Sword, which we saw in our last video, and futuristic racing franchise Wipeout. When the game first came out, Noriko was one of many characters on the roster who didn't have a representative stage. However, when Cat and Emmett were released, they brought a stage for Noriko with them, and it was mixed with a franchise that certainly deserved greater representation. So today, we'll be taking a look at Fearless and what could have possibly inspired it. Let's get started. This was once a place of tranquility and learning. Now Bohan has ravaged its beauty with his mark of corruption. At the beginning of the second chapter of Heavenly Sword, Noriko and Kai fled to the mountains, where they witnessed their clan being taken away to be imprisoned. Noriko knew that she couldn't stand for this, and so she jumped into the action. Her first action was to run to a crumbling pillar supported by a series of ropes. She used the ropes themselves to get to the top of the pillar and dodged around as the enemy started to cut the ropes before landing dramatically into the action. These ropes can be seen in the intro to the Fearless stage, and the camera zooms along them just like Noriko ran across them. For the next section of gameplay, Noriko fought off a series of enemy soldiers who arrived in large waves climbing up the side of the pillar. It's not clear what any of these soldiers were doing on this pillar, or even indeed what the purpose of the pillar was, but hey, it looked cool. This broken pillar marks the first part of the Fearless stage, where characters fight in the same small space. Just like in the original level, enemy soldiers climb up the side, apparently with the intention of joining in the battle, but they end up just standing around in the background instead. When Noriko finally cleared the waves of enemies, she used the pillar to slide down to the main structure of the building. To do this, she cut the ropes from the beginning of the stage so the pillar would fall completely and crumble. The same thing happens in Fearless and PlayStation All-Stars, with the platform crumbling and dropping fighters into the second area. Something else causes the platform to crumble, but we'll get to that later. In a later section of the chapter in Heavenly Sword, Noriko had to enter a large gate. In order to do this, she had to climb a nearby wooden structure to access a box of shields. We talked about shields last time and their ability to be thrown at switches. By throwing a shield at a nearby gong, Noriko could open the gate and progress. The wooden structure appears in Fearless in the second part of the stage after the platform crumbles, dominating the entire left-hand side. The shield boxes also appear and will rattle if enough action happens near them. Only Noriko can throw them though, since they're a part of her moveset. The gong also appears, although it doesn't do anything here. Throughout Heavenly Sword, you can encounter strange red pots lying around. These red pots were pretty important, since if Noriko broke them, she would regain health and sometimes gain a point bonus too. These pots also appear in various points in the Fearless stage. They're breakable, just like in the original game, and in a similar manner, breaking them gives you AP, whereas the original gave you health. As a final note, you may remember that we discussed Noriko's friend Kai back in her video, and she appears within the Fearless stage too, sometimes climbing around in the background. So now let's take a look at the music before moving on to the mashup.
the PS1 launched in the UK back in 1995, Sony made a concentrated effort to promote the console to young 20-somethings. At the time, clubbing was pretty big with the target demographic and this became part of the marketing, but they needed the games to match. Cue Psygnosis and their brand new title Wipeout, it was a fast-paced futuristic racing game with a pounding club soundtrack. Sony snapped it up, making it a key launch title for the console in the UK, and a title that proved hugely successful, to the point where Sony bought Psygnosis and turned them into Studio Liverpool. Wipeout has been a part of PlayStation ever since, with the game appearing on every PlayStation system to date, including the handhelds. In the games, you race floating anti-gravity spacecraft armed with various types of weaponry. The tracks twist and turn like roller coasters, the designs are vibrant, and the soundtrack is pumping. And so, it gets representation in PlayStation All-Stars. Initially just represented by items, it finally got a chance to be in a stage during the first DLC batch. So we'll take a look at how it was represented in Fearless. To show off the futuristic hover ships of the Wipeout universe, pretty much every Wipeout track is a roller coaster. They swoop around, they run along sideways and upside down, they loop, they spiral, and if you can imagine careening over it while screaming and clutching a safety bar, chances are it's in a Wipeout track. Very often, these tracks also swoop around mountains and cities, and are often suspended in crazy places to emphasise the anti-gravity nature of the game. Sometimes there will even be huge gaps in the track that you have to leap over at great speed just in case the racing didn't seem dangerous enough. In Fearless, a wipeout track forms behind the central pillar and follows the same sort of pattern as the original games. It weaves its way through the mountains in the background before plunging down a ravine. The specific layout of this track appears to be heavily based on Sol 2, a course from Wipeout HD, which is notable for floating in the air, seemingly suspended using some strange devices that also make appearances around the track in Fearless. When the stage transition happens, we see the track plunge down and eventually flip 90 degrees and run along a wall, much like tracks from the original games, and this becomes a wall for the stage itself. This section of track glows purple, most likely due to some form of magnetic energy that prevents the craft from tumbling to the ground, as seen in PS3 title Wipeout HD. This energy also electrocutes any fighter who happens to be thrown against it. There's also a jump in the background if you look closely enough, and sometimes you can see craft leaping across it. In addition, this area of the track features another nod to the Sol 2 track, as the tower structure seen in Fearless can also be seen on that course in Wipeout HD. Let's talk about the crafts themselves while we're at it. The design of them hasn't changed much throughout the series, often being sleek aerodynamic craft that mostly look like some form of dart. Different teams have slightly different designs and also different colours and logos. It is possible to see the crafts fly by in Fearless, although they whiz by so fast it's hard to make them out too well. For those who are interested, Freeze Framing reveals that the team craft that fly past the two Fizar ships, an Oricom and a Harimau. Fizar and Oricom are certainly choices that make sense, since they are the only teams that have appeared in every Wipeout game so far, with Fizar typically being the ideal beginner's option, and Oricom typically having great speed and shield but poor handling. Harimau is a more recent addition, and it's not clear why this team was picked over, say, Kyrex, a team that's featured in a lot more games. Oricom's logo can also be seen in the background, along with the logo of two more teams, EGX Technologies and Azagai developments. Why these two teams didn't have craft included is a mystery since the logos are right there. But Wipeout is an arcade style racer and like many arcade racers there is a weapon system. As you dash around the track you can run over coloured squares on the ground which equip your craft with a weapon or assist item. Two of these I will cover in the items video when I get to it but another common weapon is the plasma beam. A plasma beam was a charged shot that sent a large purple blast ahead of your ship. It was often pretty heavy hitting and would knock your opponent severely off course. A plasma beam also seems to be fired directly at the stage, and this is what causes the stage to crumble in the first place instead of broken ropes. Another square that can be found on the track is a blue arrow, which as you may guess is a turbo pad. One of these appears in Fearless as well, although it seems to be there just for show more than anything else. An interesting little easter egg that appears if you have hazards turned off is that the ships are replaced with ghostly outlines. This is a direct reference to the ghost ships from Wipeout's time trial mode, where you race against ghost versions of your previous lap records. And of course, it wouldn't be right to discuss Wipeout without talking about its soundtrack.
So that's Fearless. I hope you've enjoyed it, and a new video about another character will be rising up soon. Stay tuned. <laughs>